Hey YouTube, this video is going to address something that I think is very needed. I just want to talk about something very important to me and something I've worked on for the past few days. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's left positive comments and subscribed to me so far. I really appreciate the warm welcome to, to the community. Now, let's get down to what this video is really about. Various members of the community have messaged me in the past weeks asking questions like, how do I deal with this scammer? And how do I get my stuff back? I've tried to the best of my abilities to help out everyone who's messaged me. And ultimately, I decided that this community on YouTube needs someone to construct a how-to video on dealing with scammers. So if you've ever been scammed and would like to get your stuff back, I'm offering a step-by-step -step guideline in the next few minutes. I'm warning you guys right now, this will not be easy. It requires courage, persistence, and a calm presence. You will probably be frustrated many, many times before you make a breakthrough. But if you follow these steps, I promise that you'll give yourself a great shot to get yourself back. So step number one, make sure that you've given it ample time before you jump to conclusions. If you haven't received your merchandise after a few days, first message the person again. There could have been a mix up or a simple mistake. We don't want anyone jumping to conclusions conclusions and accusing someone of being a scammer before it's necessary. So make sure you've made several attempts at contacting the person before you go through with this. Step number two, prepare your evidence. You need to have evidence that there was a promised transaction. Keep all the YouTube messages from the seller as this is necessary for leverage. Unfortunately, some people message me asking for my help, but they couldn't provide any evidence. Well, I'm sorry to say that if you don't have any evidence, you don't have a case. So I advise everyone to send their money in the form of a check for this very reason. Because when you have a check and you send that, you have a record that they receive the money. And this will help your case if you are scammed. Step number three, find the scammer's phone number. Fortunately, since you sent the person money, you have his address, and maybe even a name if you had to write a check. Now, using this information, go to the online yellow pages and search up that address. You should be able to find that person's phone number. Step number four, initiate contact with, this, with the scammer. Now that you have his address and telephone number, begin preparing for the phone call. Pick a good time when you think his family will be home. Also, you should have a vague sense already of whether or not the scammer is a child or an adult. If it's a child, you want to aim your efforts at the parents. It seems that most of the time, scammers seem to be teenagers, so I'll provide an example of how you should start the conversation. If you want to speak with the scammer's mother, start off with, Good evening, may I speak with Mrs. X? Or, Good evening, may I speak with the Mrs. of the household? If they ask why, respond with, I recently purchased or traded something with your son through YouTube and there seems to be some problems. From that point on, calmly explain your situation and the evidence that you have. For example, your son promised that if I sent X, then I would receive X back. However, after I sent in my money or cards, he disappeared and never called me back. I'd like to know what happened. I have proof that I sent X and he never responded. When you're doing this, remember to stay calm and poised. His parents probably have absolutely no idea that this is happening. His parents didn't scam you. The kid did. Show them the proper respect that they deserve. If you get angry, then it'll only weaken your cause. Now, step number five, work towards a resolution. After you've convinced the family th that they owe you money or cards, settle on an agreement. Most of the time, it will involve getting your stuff back. However, this, if this is impossible, calmly work towards another resolution that's beneficial for both parties. Also, regularly check up with the family to make sure that you're getting your stuff back. I suggest exchanging email addresses with the family so you don't have to keep calling back. So if you've followed these five steps, you've given yourself a great shot of getting your stuff back. Because most scammers seem to be children or teenagers, reaching out to their parents often yields good results. 
And remember, if your first phone call ends in failure, or if they merely hang up on you, call back again. Be persistent, but never angry. So what happens if this fails? Well, then unfortunately, it's time to file a mail fraud report. Call your local police and the local police in the scammer's township and file a report. You need to give them all the information I've listed here and all the information that they ask for. The police will proceed to interview the family and get back to you with results. I'm warning everyone right now, use this only as a last resort. If you're absolutely sure that someone scammed you and they keep hanging up on you, only then should you file a mail fraud. Filing a police report can be lengthy and difficult, but it's absolutely necessary as a last resort. And in the end, you'll probably get your money back and everything turns out okay. But what if you don't get it back? What if you don't have enough evidence? What if the police don't find anything noteworthy in the case? Well, I'm sorry, but you just have to live with the results. I'll tell you this though, if you follow this guide and you've made a genuine effort to get your stuff back, then you've got nothing to be ashamed of. Life is often cruel and things aren't often fair. But at the end of the day, if you've given it an honest effort, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I did my best, and in the end, it was just some cash and some cards. If there's one thing in life I've learned, it's that there are very few things in life that are worth being angry about. So take a deep breath and just think about it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and found it informative, please favorite this. Forward this to your friends and spread it around the YouTube community. I want all the potential buyers on YouTube to see this so they feel empowered in case they ever get scammed. I want all the potential scammers to see this so they know that action will be taken against them if they try to bully someone. If you've made it this far into the video, then I want to thank you for listening. Peace out, YouTube.